has kindly consented to uh, talk about quilting in general and other things in to boot whatever happens to come up in the conversation so <laughs> so anyhow uh, the way I got interested in this was that I I saw these quilts that the ladies in the United Church were making and I had to have one <laughs> so I when did I get mine must be seven eight years ago now 19 75, I think it was. I really don't. I'm, I'm no good at remembering dates, yeah. and so I just remember that several years ago you got yeah. you got two, didn't you? Yeah, actually, I saw the first one, and then I thought, well, I'll, I'll have the next one um, for Carl's bed. And so, but I, it turned out so nice that I just put a few, you might say, mothballs and sit in my cedar chest up there. <laughs> Your hope chest, don't you? Yeah. yeah, actually it was a hope chest that one time. <laughs> it's one that I made. But uh, how long have you been making quilts? Well, I think the first one was about 1917. Yeah, with your mom? No. I was working on a ranch. And what's more, I got the, I got the uh, fleece to wash. And it was a job. You made it right off of uh, sheep's skin. Yes, I saw it even being clipped. Yeah. Well, at least I was watching while they were clipping it. That may yeah. not have been exact. Yeah, not and, the exact um, one. Quite I had an awful job that is. Yeah, with all those burrs and uh, well, leaves. Well, it's the oil in it. Do they have fleas or do sheep have? Oh yes, all, uh, all things have fleas. I think it's quite a good size. Oh well, no, wait a minute, is it a flea or a? Oh, that's right, they're dip um, sheep. Um, or um, one of those. Uh, was it all the cattle and horses? Ticks. And ticks. Yeah. I know they have ticks. Yeah. It's quite a good sized one. I, I know that. I don't remember. And you didn't really particularly want to have those in your quilt. Well, <laughs> that, um, I don't know whether I thought about it. I think I, I've seen them, you know, because I was there for two years. And uh, I uh, I was not only working there, but I was like a, a niece of the family. I've known them all, all my life. and. Um, she was in a tight corner. There was no school to go on to, so there it was. But I washed that, oh, I that much because it, the oil is very, very heavy. Mm -hmm, that lateral, yeah, yeah, it's thick. And, uh, and then, but that's good for your hands. Oh, I don't remember anything about that, because I was young and strong. And my hands are good and such like. But uh, then the lady of the house, who had German Mennonite ancestry, Card, I think I tried the card a little bit once or twice just to see what it felt like. And then we put it together and made a quilt. Mm -hmm. Was it a patchwork quilt? It's all scraps or was it a brand I one? don't remember what the top was yes. or the bottom, yeah. but I know they uh, used the fleece for the filling. And um, I learned how to, how to quilt. Now, the first thing that you just got to know was that I am no expert. And anybody who tells you I am just exhibits their ignorance. <laughs> I know a lot. Well, of how many have you made? Oh, I have a good job. A hundred? You must have made a hundred quilts from my Well, I know, but to, to start with, when I came home, I was only down there two years, and I came home, and I taught my mother how to quilt. And then she belonged to a ladies' group at the church called the Ladies' Aid in those days. And she immediately started making quilts. And, for, and, you know, in the days of coal and wood fires, there were lots of fires, houses burning, and they always supplied a, um, a quilt. Didn't make any difference who it was or what or anything else. If it was a fire, they supplied a quilt. To keep people warm. The church group. Yeah. And they were all lined, they were all cotton filled. You could buy cotton bags. Yeah. And, uh, then that kept up to my mother's death in 1940. And the neighbor and I, Zelma and I, made quilts for our own families. I don't know whether she'd worked on a quilt before or not, but I'd worked on, on quilts enough. But I, we, our quilts are the very ordinary um, running stitch mm -hmm. quilting. When you come to experts, their quilting is quite different. For instance, they use a very short needle, and they go up and down. We we, can, we do a running stitch, and they're and they're um, 
stitches are nine to twelve stitches per inch. Now your eyes good. Go over there and look at that and see. They're between four and, yeah, and six I'd stitches. Say five. Yeah. Well, I I'd don't say think there's even as much as five, and a great many of them. Move your eye around some. Now, for instance, on this row here. Yeah, there's five. No, five and six. Yeah. I, I don't think we very often. You know what an expert though is. Well, I know that uh, there are different kinds of quilt. There are so many, many kinds of quilting. Yeah, There's yeah. no. Now, but an expert is a person that won't say he's an expert. You never find an expert saying he knows everything about something. Well, no. Because he gains of enough not. experience to recognize that he's just sort of dabbling in it, just, just getting into it. And well, I've done a lot of quilting, but it's always of, that, of what's called the ordinary mm -hmm. type of quilting. Mm -hmm. And it's. Um, it's the running stitch, where the uh, the people that really go in for the, the beautiful quilts that you see in, in fairs and, and exhibitions and that have been kept for a couple of hundred years and this kind of thing, Use that are up all down. done, um, most of them are done. Is there an advantage to that? Does it lock it better? Does it make the quilt more? Well, uh, an awful lot depends on, on the kind of, uh, of, of a thing you're making. If you're making good, big, strong quilts, and now all the pioneers from northern United States and up into Canada and along Europe, made them for warmth. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were made from old, from men's suits and women's, women's dresses and things that were no longer useful to make down for Johnny and to make down for Johnny <laughs> with yeah. the littler one. This yeah, I was, I was telling you about that one I got from the Thomases. That was oh, a yes. suit. Well, I don't think they made them that heavy. We had one that my grandmother made that was a log cabin. And it had been men in suits, but not as heavy as overall, as, as um, overcoat material. Yeah, yeah. But um, well, a quilt that heavy, I found well, kind of uncomfortable to sleep in because of the weight bearing oh, down. Oh yes, because we're not used to weighty things nowadays. Yeah. But um, quilts have, have, have varied so they've been feather lined and wool lined and uh, cotton lined. Cotton lined. Yeah. Now it's old, old, old in China. They've worn padded garments yeah, for right. for. Yeah long before yeah. the states were in Canada were ever started. And, but they I, knew the advantage of it well before well, we did, yeah. The, the garment was just putting another padded garment on and there was no no um, fancy stitchery, although they're, they're marvelous needle needle workers. They probably stitched or even and that kind of thing. But, uh, and then, uh, but they'd be all padded with cotton. There were just the three materials in China that I've ever read about, and that was linen, and cotton, and uh, silk. And uh, so, and I've never read anything about Chinese keeping sheep. Yeah, yeah. that's right, no sheep. Or... And so, anything I've read about has been cotton lined. Hmm. And then I read about a little bit about the rich families, and they still said silk and quilts and such like. And I don't know what they'd have been filled with unless it was. And the ordinary. Quilted garments, from anything in the pictures that I can see and such, like they seem to be just done um, in squares or lines or something or like that, just to keep the, the lining in place. But there's feather lining, and you know what? Eider down. Yeah, and I got those Norwegian bags. Did I ever show you one of mine? I don't remember. Boy. But they are, I read the other day that they're, they're absolutely tops for filling, no matter what. Yeah. Do you know what they told me in Norway, though? Where they get that eider down? Oh, the, the nests? China. China. The Chinese are raising ducks that are real good for uh, for eider down. They're oh. they're not eider down. They're down. They they're don't down. say that anymore. But they're buying their well, they're uh, down good. from. And I was in the factory, and I watched how they tested it. And what they did, they put a uh, certain volume of feathers, stuff, you know, and put it in a cylinder, and they drop a weight on it, to see how much, you know, the cylinder was graduated. And the weight would press down on the feathers. And if they were good feathers, they held it up. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of loft in it. And if they were poor feathers, it sunk. Yeah. And that's the way they test it. So these bags that I've got, oh man. They've got it, they require it over there normally, I guess, the rest of it. You have to put down what kind of loft there is to the feathers yes. on every. Well, uh, that's that's the way, because there have been all kinds of feather things. There's goose down. Mm -hmm. I've, Duck feathers. Uh, I've seen them. Um, I've seen some of the, well, this same woman that I worked for, I said the men on that background, she, um, she, they had geese, and I've seen her pluck the geese. Yeah. And, Alive? Oh, yes. 
So they get another batch of feathers. At voting time, yeah. you see. And uh, they hold them a certain way and pop them a certain way. And um, the gander certainly objected very strongly. And uh, the man of the house looked after him. And even then, he took a chunk right out of his head. Is that right? They, they nip, they pull, and yank. So, oh, gee. But at any rate, he had to submit to the indignity too, but the the, uh, the geese themselves didn't seem to worry too much about it. Yeah. It was it was molting time anyhow, yeah. and uh, so they were losing. And they just um, take them certain certain yeah. parts, not the great big feathers that have you know yeah. requires too much to grow. I think they're constantly replacing the down anyway. Yeah. I think. Well, yeah. anywhere there's ducks, you find feathers all over. Yes, the and then there's, then there's duck. Ducks. Now I I've had cushions on my coat. My husband and my father and my sons all went hunting. Well, I shot grouse too, but I've had grouse and, and uh, any kind of ducks that were around and, and chicken feathers from chickens that I had raised, and but they've all made cushions. Mm -hmm. And I even found a dead owl that was not very long dead. And I picked a few of the feathers off its breast just to say I had outfitted it. <laughs> did you, you ever make a pillow with feathers or a quilt? Or did you? No, Zelma made a, um, a quilt with just the chicken feathers from the chickens. We used to have chickens up here in the back. And it's heavy, and she quilted it in squares. But you know the old uh, quilts that the um, European peoples, so many of them, and there is an art to the way that you shake the feathers up, and they're not quilted very closely. You shake the feathers a certain way, and if you do it right, you can distribute them all. They're not all packed in one corner like they are by morning or something. And those quilts are not, not... They always hang them out every morning. And they're not quilted the same. Yeah, and they're quilted. tubes. They're yeah. put into tubes. Yeah, that's what Selma did. And then she crossed the tubes with, with no, lines of stitching. No, they don't in Europe. They don't. No, they're just... They're, they're free to roam back and forth in those tubes. Well, but then when you make your bed up, you see there was an old German lady lived next to me, and she had, she had a feather mattress. And I... And then she laid on top of the feathers. Yes, and then she had feathers on top of the side. Oh, what a, mm -hmm. what a bed that would be, huh? Yeah. And it was quite a heavy thing in its way because there were an awful lot of feathers yeah. in there. And, yeah. and you, you took it and shook it certain ways, and it, it's quite an art, and it's yeah. soft to, get it, to make a bed yeah. nicely. Yeah. But uh, when it came to this quilting, we quilted all the quilting that I taught my mother. That, that I had, I think we made more than one quilt down that farm, but I don't remember. The first one was that fleece that I washed. I remember that, and I think we made another one. And I don't remember what the tops were at all. But with my mother, it was crazy quilts. Everyone sold, and so there were there were bags and bags of, of scraps everywhere. And we used mm -hmm. the crazy quilt, and we made we cut 12 inch squares of paper, newspaper or light brown paper, and. Um, Made the squares up crazy, and it wasn't so unwieldy. You had. And then, then you tore it, when you got it from stitch down. Then you tore the paper off, and you then you put the uh, quilt together. Yeah, Zelma showed me how that. Yes, yeah. and. Um, so you've got your pattern on that paper, and then as long as it, then it later on it fits into the overall picture. You just well, there isn't any picture to it, but when you put the thing together, if you've got a number of red square, red 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 strips, you don't put them all in one spot. You try to yeah. distribute them or something like that. And sometimes you put the, those squares together with strips of, of color, plain material is the best, and sometimes not, just depending on how much you had left from a lot of other quilts you've been making. Mm -hmm. And uh, the backs uh, were, are they the print or the cotton broadcloth? And we did that for years. Oh, well, my mother used such flower sacks and used um, um, and soothing swatches. There was no filling on those, and they were just tied here and there. But quilts have been tied and quilted, and when you, and when you do a, a wool one, if you're, it's got to be taken apart every so many years and recarded. Otherwise, it just goes, you know, it, it mats up and chunks. It loses chunks the insulation. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and so... Do you, you clean it at the same time, then, when you take it apart? Oh, yes. And, uh, Presumably, it's been washed a number of times and shook out and hung out and all the rest of it. But you take it and you re-card re it if you have carding material. If you have carders, you do it like that. But if you don't, you pick it by finger, with your fingers. Yeah, yeah. 
and uh, just put loft back in. Yes, and then you, uh, but you do it in light, light, almost cheesecloth weight, um, one bleach cotton usually, and uh, and quilt it in. Not too, not too far apart, but still fairly close, and it's long stitches because it's deep, being wool. Mm -hmm. And you can't use two small stitches in that, you just back right down hard. Mm -hmm. So you take big long stitches. Well, of course, that doesn't shift around as badly. No, and then that's, well, that's the idea. So it doesn't, you don't have, you don't to, have to redo have to, it yeah. so soon. Yeah. And then uh, I imagine the modern dryers, if they put them in very, very cool drying, that uh, you could keep a, a wool quilt for a long time. But what you do it was make, make, um, well, it's an envelope of anything that you happen to have around the place, sheets, old sheets, and or, um, crazy, crazy quilt patterns, all sorts of things. And then just tie it here and there on the, uh, the quilted wool, wool innards. Yeah. Then you can take that top off, because it's just a matter of clipping those few ties, mm -hmm. and wash that and put it back on if you air the uh, the wool thing very well and give it a good shake every once in a while. You're in the life of it's quite a while. Yeah. Well, I know that people down across the border there in the United States are really considering quilts heirlooms now. They're they're becoming, you know. Well, yes. Antiques. Well, in, in they've been place. antiques for a long time, but the, with the upsurge there's been the last few years of, of quilting. Uh, it's going to be a long time for them before any of them are. Yeah, our yeah, right. I know that my now the ones that Selma and I made for our families, they and mother made them oh for some of the, the grandchildren too, and but they're mostly all worn out. They were cotton, you see, and uh, and they're washed regularly, and uh, they just have a certain and, lifespan. And when you're put and you're on your children's beds and such like, if there's a bunch of children, why well, they just get Play. worn out? Yeah. And and um, quilts that my youngest daughter, a couple of quilts that her grandmother had made were finally used on the lawn to lie out on the lawn. They were yeah. really shocked before they were ever allowed to have that happen to them. Boy, that reminded me of something I did as a kid. You know, in the Army, they made these super blankets, really good blankets. Yes, and my mom had one of those. I think my dad brought it back from the Navy. He brought everything back. Most of the guys just threw the stuff, you know, threw yeah. it away and said, we're heading home. My dad packed his duffel bag just as tight as he could with everything. I was using some of the string they used, you know, as Navy people for tying stuff to the cord or so, what do they call cordage. But that blanket came along. I think that's where it came from. But well, one day my sister and I made a tent and we pegged the, the, the blanket down with wooden pegs in yeah. all the corners. Yeah, drove it through. Oh. Oh, was my mother mad. Well, she didn't get really mad. She was sick, and that made us feel bad. Right. You know, she showed her disgust in other ways and shaking a stick at us. We, we felt bad about well, it. We, we never even thought. We had an American, uh, a two or three American Army blankets here for quite a number of years that had gone to, to grandchildren, uh, children and grandchildren over the years. But, uh, and they were made into tents, but, but um, I don't know whether I insisted on it or somebody else did, but certainly they were tied with the cord, and that cord was used to, 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 to hold the peg. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, but those things do wear out. Mm -hmm. And I made a, I made a, um, a hunting coat out of one. Yeah, that would be heavy. Huh? It, it was quite heavy, yeah. but he said it kept him warm no matter what. Yeah, I made it sure. well down, pretty near to his knees. Mm -hmm. and I used to have uh, my dad's old pea coat. They called it a pea coat. It was a a blue serge kind of color. Well, they were short, weren't they? No, they came they down about mid, oh. mid length. They weren't the great coats like the Indian. Well, they called them pea jackets, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. And that was so heavy, it was just, I think it was felt. It was cut. Well, I think it was heavy melting cloth. Wow, was that thing. I used to try were, it on my trap. They were windproof. Line. Oh, they sure were. You couldn't sweat, that was the trouble. The moisture didn't leave. No. And so when I wore it on my trap line, I just come back soaked. So I had to quit wearing that thing mm -hmm. and get an old... It wasn't cold enough. There wasn't enough wind to make it necessary. Yeah, that. and I was hiking. And yeah, in the woods, you never found much wind. You get it. it was out in the lakes or the water that you got that wind. Yeah. You know, I'm getting, getting back to quilts again. I don't know about the southern states. 
except things that I've read. But there wasn't the necessity for warrants on so many of them that I'm thinking of. And they certainly did works of art. Now, they didn't put much filling in. Very often it was old. A thin cotton, a thin yeah. flannel sheet, possibly. But the intricate handwork that went into that was very beautiful, very intricate patterns. And that was all done by the very precise. Up and down, down stitch. Well, you've seen the fox. Uh, did you see my fox fire book that had quilting in it? Yes. I yeah. think I had it twice. Yeah. That thing, uh, the, the uh, works of art there. Well, that's where people in the States are going off when they want really nice quilt, antique quilts. Poor farmers down there get people knocking on their doors, as I understand, mm -hmm. asking. Well, and, and um, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and uh, well, we don't know too much about Quebec because it hadn't been opened up so much, I mean, until recently. But uh, the, the maritime provinces with Maine, I have been. Yeah, right you know, the there. thrust yeah. of Maine up in there, they're all, their their culture was all the same. Yeah. And uh, and the quilts in that area were warm quilts. And I suppose they were lined with wool mostly. Yeah. Then the only alternative was cotton. Well, we've been, cut, we've been um, all during the years that the Ladies' Aid made their quilts were always cotton bats. And we could get very nice ones, really. You know, they they were named quilt bats. What's and, that? Um, um, named quilt. Southern Southern um, mist and oh things like what's the name on that bat right behind you there? It's got a name. Is this that back rock? Yeah. Mountain mist. Mountain mist. That's yeah. one. That's one. That's quite an old one. That name. Well, then we were quilting for our grandmothers with just cotton quilts, the cotton bats, for some time, and I read somewhere about um, synthetic. It was very superior, and very light. And they dried very fast, like you know, yeah, like the washers yeah, right. did. Yeah. So I went down to Vancouver. I was making a wedding present for my one of my daughters, and I it was a kind of silky material, and I had a stamp of a big peacock, and I wanted that. Didn't want the cotton if I could help it. Just after I'd read about this, <coughs> so I walked miles and miles and miles up and down. Granville and Hastings and in and out of stores and everywhere. And finally, in one, I found, they said it was something that was very brand new. And that's what I was looking for, of course. Most of the places have no idea what I was talking about at all. And the list said, yes, they had. Well, the, the bats were an odd shape. And it took two of them to um, make uh, this small quilt that I was making, which was really a coverlet. And, uh, I brought it home, and from then on, not very long afterwards, in Simpsons. And it was then, it was then the Canadian company only. Mm -hmm. uh, put out one they called Terran, and from then on, we've never used a cotton bat since. And they're, they're so superior because you can wash those things, and uh, they dry in such a short time, especially for baby quilts. They're marvelous because mm. they're, they're warm and... Uh, I can feel it on my hand right now, just resting my yes. hand against it. And uh, there have been all kinds of bats, some good and some bad and some indifferent, but uh, certainly the terrarine was one of those. Yeah, they call this formerly terrarine. You know when they started making these? No. 1884. Yeah. 1884, that's the stern. Oh, of yes, Boston. but then the morning, the mountain mist was is an old, old uh, American... Uh, um, Built that name, and that was cotton. Years before ago. these, yeah. Before they made them the synthetic. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, well, what's the strangest thing you've ever heard of going in? Have people ever taken a suit like that or something and put in there as a, as a lining, like just put old clothes in there? Oh, I think they have, but they they make awfully heavy bulky yeah. things. And and washing, of course. Well, we made one quilt up one time. It went to a, a terribly impoverished family. And there were a whole lot of children in the one bed, and someone had a, a re rehashed. She'd sent old wool, so we had a really nice thick bed, mm -hmm. and we we quilted up that into a, a very big quilt. There were several children in the so family, we could all nestle under and I'm one. sure that all children slept under it, and possibly it was never washed. Yeah. It probably well, she might have. 
with the best intentions in the world, she, she, she couldn't have made those children do without anything to cover them, except in the very summertime, and she probably, but she had no facilities. Yeah. She lived on a river bank. Where was that? In, around here? Yes. Yeah, I won't mention any names. No, and I, I think not. Yeah. Because the welfare man came to me and, uh, said, and talk, said about this family. And he had walked out on them, and there was one coming. And uh, they, and he had taken whatever assets they had. And they were. he said, you know, I'm not supposed to report these things to any but my own headquarters. But he said, you're a group making quilts. And he said, that is a grave necessity. The man has been, I think the man is dead now that came to me that time. Mm -hmm. So I'm not telling any tales out of school now, but um, we made a crazy quilt, top and bottom. We had lots, we had a lot of, we had one woman in particular who made nothing but crazy, crazy quilt squares. And so we always had a pile of squares that would be assembled into a quilt in, in a in mm -hmm. pretty, you know, fast time. And we, we spent extra time and we got that off, oh, just in, about a week afterwards. And, um, and it was a very big, it was a very big quilt too, but it would be warm and I imagine they kept a lot of little youngsters pretty cozy for... Yeah, we had one when we were kids, we called it Big Betsy. <laughs> we had a name for our quilt. Oh, well, you did, eh? Yeah, my mother made it and I'll never forget that thing. That was so comfortable. It must have been almost two and a half, three inches. Well, back. now you see with that, they could not use the fine quilting. Well, it was just tied together. My mother made it. With all us kids, there wasn't much time for fancy stitches. No, so but the thing is that you couldn't use fancy stitches on that. Because she just, she with just the bulk, put yarn through. With the bulk, it would just tear the material. Yeah. So you had to tie them with wool. Yeah, she just used yarn. I yarn. remember that. Yeah. These, uh, we'd play with those little things, you know. There was a fancy knot, and sometimes it would slip. But it was kind of a neat knot, and so we'd be. Well, that's know, always kids. been a problem, is find a knot that would hold on that. Yeah. And wool's the best thing to hold those. Yeah. And you had to do it with wool because uh, it, it would, would tear the material. It would just tear the material up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the yeah. greater the loft, the, uh, the, you know, the, the more you, you wouldn't be able to. And you, of course, you couldn't take small stitches. I mean, you yeah. have huge, big darn needles. I've got one that's about five, six inches. I've got a needle I should show you sometime. I don't know what it's for. It's about that long. It's a needle. It's that's a, what, 16 inches? Uh -huh. It's a needle, it's got an eye on one end, and can't figure out what to do. The only thing I can think of is for straw or something. Might have been. To sew up something, or upholstery, but I can't think of any upholstery that was that big. I know I've got a, a button missing on that crazy old chair of mine, you know, that wreck of mine, that yeah. elevator chair. I've got a button missing, and there's a spring loose, and I've been thinking. I should use that needle and pull that spring. Well, it might be that it is an upholstery needle of some kind. Yeah. No, I'm almost sure it must be. But getting back on quilts again. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah. And, but there are so many ways. There are, there are some are quilted by machine. Yeah. I'm no good at that. And uh, there's only one or two things that I'm sure I know that I, I really feel like I really know them, and that is that you have to be very careful about your about your um, measurements if you're going to have anything that looks like it. It's going to come out square and yes. neat. Yes, yeah. and uh, that's one thing for sure. Well, I can testify that you still use a ruler. You're laying everything off of ruler. You know? Well, um, the frames, they're these these two frames, the shorter one, the yeah. two are the same length. The side ones are the same length. So when I do put a thing up, I start at the corner and work it, pin it, keep pinning it. Mm -hmm. And um, then I find out that I've got to match. And the quilt's got to come to that measure. Yeah, because you start off with it. Yeah. Because, but no, but I meant for your, for the, for the um, that's, that's kind of a, you, you can adjust that sort of thing. But you're, when you're doing a fancy top, now there's piecing, there's great big, sh one one big piece with patterns on it, and you can buy lots of materials and everything. I, I wouldn't know how many quilts must have been made just tracing some of the patterns. And they do it with upholstery, they do it with all kinds of things. They have a beautiful pattern, upholstery, and then quilt it, 
quilt around part of them. Quilt around. all the roses, for instance. And, and that, I don't know how they do that. You mean out of a pattern cloth? Oh, yes, we've done that. Like lots. your curtain there. It's yes. got roses on it? Yeah. You would quilt over those just to use them as a pattern? Well, that wouldn't be a very good example, but that would be the type of thing I would mean. But if you, if you looked in the catalog, you can see some of these upholstered things. And, and, they, and they, we've done a lot of baby quilts for the flannelette or another material. It's, uh, it's clowns and, and animals and balls and tops and things like that. Well, you work around those. Mm -hmm. And if they're too far apart, you do a, a background lattice work that just doesn't go through the, the, thing, the figure but makes background so that you have, there isn't too much distance in any way so that the material can separate and, uh -huh. and pack up. And that there's that kind of thing. An applique is sewing cut out materials on and uh, sewing around with embroidery or machine yeah. or anything well, else. Well, that's what I've got. You've got what you've got. Yeah. And um, then there's plain embroidered ones. They take a great big sheet background in the business so as not to, not to distort any of the embroidery. And there are lots of patterns of planlets and things we've done with baby things. And we've still simply built um, um, quilted diagonal lines both ways, or square lines, whichever uh, mm -hmm. person wants to do. Well, there's a variety of things you can do. And uh, right over the figure. And if you don't use some fancy bright color that's a contrast or something, the, the quilting seems to go disappear in the background and your and your pattern, even though you pull it over it, is right there. We've done that a lot on for baby quilts. It will bring us pretty flannelettes and mm -hmm. cottons that have been printed. And uh, and then there are all the different sorts of quilts that are that are made up separately in the hospital up here is been making because the older people up there, their hands are not very good and their eyesight isn't very good. They've been taking little squares and sewing them to a top one that's a little bit looser and stuffing them with some of the synthetic. They used to use some um, nylons, chopped up nylons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that makes a good quilt too. A yeah. little puffy quilt. Yeah, and, and then each one is a little puff one and yeah. they're sewn yeah. and they work together. Do you know uh, Dagmar Olson over in the class there? Uh, she yeah, made I think one I like that yes. for her uh, grandkids. Well, they did, one, they did one to hospital, and then they wanted to, to make it stronger, and they brought it down to us, and we uh, we tied it to a sheet, and then uh, I took the edges and turned them over and sewed them down so that it had a border about so wide of the background, and so it's a good, strong quilt that yeah. uh, won't pull apart easily. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, if kids get a hold of it, they're going to test it too. Or is well, that a kid's yes, quilt? Well, yes, depends on their mothers. <laughs> well, I've got boy, one. I've walked into Carl's room and found, uh, I found, one day I found that room just about half tent. Yeah. He made, you know, out of blankets and stuff and chairs and we had a little cubby hole back in the corner. Of course, you've heard about Carl's detective club, haven't you? No. Haven't you? Secret detective club? Oh. He's got three members. Oh. And so they've taken over the upper part of my garage, and they put uh, they made a room out of the storage area there. So that's their clubhouse. Oh. Well, and every child should have a clubhouse. And then Something. there's an aerial running out of the out of the clubhouse into the willow tree. Yeah. And Carl hooks his uh, CB up to that. And one of the other kids has a CB, so they radio back and forth to each other. But not only that, he's picked up Georgia, Missouri. Uh, California, all over the, you know, North America. He's picking up on the CB. Isn't that against the law? Well, I don't know. I asked uh, your neighbor here. I asked him what that. I said, oh. I wonder, if, you know, Carl might be bringing up a... Well, he said they're just the same as CBs in a truck. What he's doing, he's picking up the truckers. Oh, I see. In these various places on their channel. Because I know that, uh, that hams have to be licensed. Yeah. Ham operators. I know, but CBs don't. Well, they don't. They're only on two channels, I guess, oh, I or something see. like that. But anyhow, yeah, Carl can test anything. I'm telling you, the way he goes through stuff. Well, his pants, those knees, 
<laughs> Those knees in his pants? I never was that hard on my, the knees in my pants. Are I you sure? Know. Well, yeah, I am. I did not. I was easy on my clothes. Carl, and it's always the left knee. Why is it they must fall with the left knee? Or something? I don't know. They, they, the things that the children do on this generation are certainly different than the ones mm -hmm. in this generation, and the one before, and the one before. Well, my boys didn't go through the knees of their pants very much for the simple reason that they were knee pants. Mm -hmm. And their sock, stock, uh, stockings, socks came up to them. Oh, so they yeah, And they didn't, go in, they didn't wear the long pants. They went through the stocking then. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, well, the pants did go through just at the edge because yeah. they were over the knee, but then it um, it wasn't the same as having a long leg and a hole right in the middle of the leg, mm -hmm. like, the, like the knees were long yeah. pants. But, uh, boy, nobody wore long pants. That's yeah. where you got to a certain age before you wore long pants. Yeah. It wasn't as strong when my boys were coming along because some did wear overalls if they were out in the country, but uh, they wouldn't have worn them at school. I think they wouldn't have been allowed to. Now, blue jeans go any place. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, I'm just thinking of some more kinds of quilts. Well, uh, what, you could tell me the names of some of those quilts. Remember you, that bear pot fascinated me? Well, bear pot, um, I've got a lot of books around. And all of the old um, uh, traditional patterns went from person to person and generation to generation. The one you're referring to was simply called bear paw. And there was some... Um, was there a log cabin pattern? There are a lot of different kinds of log cabins, but the main log cabin, that little piece in the center, usually was made of bright and that was called the, the, the um, window years ago. Yeah. But and then they, they built up around it, just kept going, yeah, going out around, around the square. Yes. Yeah. And those are the, they represent the logs? Well, I presume so. Yeah. And there's so many ways of putting those together. I'll show you some pictures afterwards. Yeah. And uh, and um, turkey tracks is one. And, oh, there are fancy, fanciful names. Now, there's one old one that comes, I don't know where it comes from, but it's someplace in Europe. And it's at least 400 years old from the, the write-ups that I've, the little, little bits of write-ups that I've been able to get along. And it's called Daddy Hex. Hex, H-E-X. H-E-X, yeah. Daddy, Hex. And there's, there's some, um, it's a circle thing, but it's made up of small pieces. It's quite elaborate, but that's its name, and it's an old one, and I don't know whether it comes from Denmark or where it comes from, but somewhere in Europe. I've got it written someplace, and I can't remember mm -hmm. right now where it is. And that's, I've seen, it's been resurrected, and I've come across it in some of the modern magazines, actually a pattern to, uh -huh. to do them. And I think it's still called Daddy Hicks. And then there's one very interesting thing. It's made of two pieces. And you can do it large or small. It's a square, and one corner is cut out on a curve. And there's at least a dozen ways to put that together. Does that have a name? And that's called Drunkard's Path. <laughs> yeah, because it's everything's square except that one corner. Yes, but the ways you put it together makes the most beautiful curved things. Mm -hmm. And uh, Just I'm, I'm sure a dozen is not, is underestimates the number of ways it can be put together. That one, and the things that, that you can block. do with squares and triangles. Yeah. And now those are pieced quilts. Yeah. All of those are pieced. Yeah. And now we don't use those for our grandmothers for the simple reason that one person has got to do the pieces. Otherwise, it'll uh, the whole pattern will be grouped up. Well, each person does a little, uh, does a little yeah, bit different. Right. You can draw the line carefully, and one will, will, will carefully write, sew right down the middle of the line. The next one will very carefully sew just above it. Another one will sew just below it. Mm -hmm. But you know that makes that makes sometimes as much as almost an eighth of an inch, or certainly sixteenth any time. Mm -hmm. But you multiply that the size of the quilt, yeah. so and you've got a distortion short, that yeah. really isn't going to work at all. So. With a group effort like our quilts are, we stick to things unless people bring in quilt tops that have been made by someone, and, some just put them and then we'll put them together and yeah. we'll quilt them. Now, one of the famous ones is wedding ring, double wedding ring, yeah. and it's it's a beautiful pattern. And I don't know how long that's been. I don't know whether it originated in Europe. I, all, the only one that I know for sure 
that from anything I've read that originated in Europe or um, was this Daddy Hicks? Well, an awful lot of the patterns originated in the states of Canada. You know what I was reading the other day? Of course, you know I'm interested in Norway. Yeah. But some uh, ladies from the Mormon Church. I didn't realize they were that, but they have missionaries in Norway. Oh yes, of course. And so the Norwegian women found out that there's Mormons who used to make quilts, yeah. and they're just gung ho right now to get a hold of these quilt patterns from North America. It's really caught on like wildfire in Norway. So the women are making quilts over there, and you know the ones that I saw in Norway were just straight plain colored and down built. Yeah. But no. Oh, well, I don't know about, I don't know anything about quilting down at all. It's uh, just how much, well, you know how what they close do? things have to be, or, or how, how, how much leeway you've got, or whether it's got to be close, or, or what. Well, I found out, I went to the factory where my bag was made, and they make quilts there too, down quilts. And they blow this stuff in. Yes. They make the tubes, and then they have this. But any any down quilts, and I've seen lots of down comforters, and Anybody could afford one. I had one when I was in action. They were one of the worst things. You never could get your feet or shoulders in the same thing. You know how sawed off I am. Well, they're short all the time. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. But anyway. I bought they a were queen in, size and it's still short. They were, uh, they were <laughs> uh, quilted in all in curves. Yeah. So presumably, I don't understand about this long tubes business. That might have been done with the, for, um, Mattresses and things, I mean, you don't know. Well, they call them feather beds. You buy them, and yes. it's called a feather bed. But I never saw any of these fancy quilts over there. Never did. But the, the, these, these um, um, down comforters that you've seen so much, you know, they were, they were good grades and better. You no, know, there was an ordinary grade and good grades. Some would be well, ducking, and then there'd be goose, and then there'd be ivy yeah. down, and all this sort of thing. But I. Anything I've seen that were commercially made, and that's all I saw, were very intricate curves everywhere. So that apparently nothing could go very far before yeah, it shifted. Yeah, it wouldn't shift around. Wouldn't, so there'd be no shifting. That's what happened with our big quilt when we were kids. Somehow beating and wrestling around with Big Betsy, you know. Yeah. We, we, you could see daylight through it in many places, you know. Oh sure. The bat had been kicked around, and and so you, I don't know how it is, but your feet find the warm spot. And you'd find it in the morning. You'd find you avoided the cold spots, and you crawled under sure. the warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it wool? Yeah, it was wool. Well, then it, it should have been taken up, possibly if your mother had the time. Yeah, with and five kids. And you got it away from you. you <laughs> would, and, and you'd had more of them to come and go on. Yeah. She'd have had it recarded and redone. Yeah. But uh, where you have an active family and they need to be covered up now, why, that's not so easy to do. There's yeah, we sure enjoyed that quilt. And then when I got over to Norway, I had to get one of those feather ones. You know, I, that was a bargain, a really good bargain. I got one. I walked into the store. Actually, what I did, I was looking in Norway, and I kept seeing them in the stores, and they were priced you know, like $250. I had to have a queen size one, too. Yeah. So I got over to Copenhagen. Copenhagen, they say, over there, but that's Copenhagen. And I went into this store. And, of course, obviously they knew I wasn't a Dane, so I got a clerk that could speak English. And, Boy, are you in luck, they, she said. And I said, why? She said, we're having a sale on our best quilts. So I went in and, and looked at Beautiful. I don't know if I've ever sh I'll show it to you sometime. Oh, you haven't shown it to me. Then. But anyway, <clears throat> it was $186 for this queen size quilt. Well, and I got back here. And $600. Oh yes, I know that that price wouldn't have been out of the way years and years and years ago. Yeah, yeah. Because so there was was it sat? What is it uh, covered in? Real fine cloth uh, and sort of uh, satin. Well, because those those uh, those fine satins that they did those were feather proof. Yeah, well, they the had to be really old before the and, and corners worn before feathers came out. Yeah. And it, 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 it was a very fine material. You'd never find any anywhere else except in the factory for that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, the thing about it, too, is they've got a cloth over there that they use. That, uh, well, I mean, it can be woven fine, but it breathes. They're ahead of us on their camping stuff because mm -hmm. they've got a tradition of camping that goes back a long ways before ours. We're just getting into pleasure camping now. 
Yeah. Or has it been utilitarian camping, you know, because we had it. But uh, I was going to ask you, I, ha I thought this question was, uh, have you ever had any interesting stories come back from those quilts that you donated? I know you've given quilts away for years to the missions in the United Church. Well, that was another thing that the grandmother, that uh, the, the old lady's aide did, too. They, they sent them to mission hospitals in northern, in northern Canada a lot, to Indian hospitals, mm -hmm. because the church supported a lot of different hospitals in a certain area would have an allocation for this hospital. And, and we were still doing that when, with our grandmothers. We took over the allocations for, from the um, darkest circle here. And mm -hmm. they were glad to get rid of it because they were doing so much catering and it took about yeah. all they could handle. Yeah. And so when we formed, well, you know how we formed, Selma mm -hmm. phoned me up one day and she said, Oreo, you and I just simply can't do that catering. That's got to be for the younger women. <coughs> but she said, then, we ought to have some sort of thing that we can work on now that we don't have a ladies' aid anymore. We just it yeah. for several good reasons. And, uh, I'll bet they would be interested. <laughs> so she said, the way you said that. <laughs> but anyhow, go anyway, ahead. she uh, she said, "Are you interested?" And I said, "She said, you know, there's the um." Listen to this car. Is that the fire engine or a police car? It's the yeah, no, it's in the ambulance. Oh. Mm. Um, she said, "You know, you know the allocations that the the darkest circle has each year." She said, "They make baby clothes and and quilts and things." For, for the hospital, and she did say where it was. I've forgotten now. And uh, she said, we could take that over for one thing. So I said, well, I'll, I'll round up Mrs. Good, Mrs. Woodford. She just moved next door. I knew she sold. And uh, so we got together and asked a few of the women that thought we'd be interested to make baby clothes and, uh, and uh, oh, maybe make a quilt a year or something like that. And then Mrs. Uh, what was the editor's name? Curry. Yeah. Came yeah. in one time. We'd asked her to, to join, and she'd been there. And we'd, the darkest circle had joyfully given over the allocation to us because they were really a job for them. Yeah. And um, she brought a box. Well, Full of yeah, scraps. And loaded that box. And there were at least four that I can think of. Oh, another, Grandmother's Flower Garden is another quilt that's very versatile. And it's made of six sided squares and usually about this size. And um, my goodness, we started to finish those up. And for years we had a tiger by the tail and we didn't know how to let go. She had four of them on the go in that box. Huh? And she had given them up. Oh yeah. She got yeah. too much for her and some of them were old as the hills. Yeah. And, and there was one of those grandmother flower garden ones and I said, I'm interested in that. I think I'll take that home and see what I can do. And uh, various other things. I knew. I knew how about. Um, I had my uh, quilting frames from when, from the quilts that we used to make. Mm -hmm. When Zelma and I made them, she liked to make the tops, and I preferred the quilting. And uh, well, that's good. We did, work, we did our work. We did our work together. Yeah. An awful lot. So, and that was the only bedding outside of sending back wool stuff to those um, companies that used to take take wools, and then they send blankets. Shred it back. Yeah. And then send blankets or. Or, um, Could you do that? Gather wood, wool clothing, all send it off to a of factory, and, ends. and they would give you a blanket. Yes. And then save part of the wool for themselves. Right? I presume so. Yeah, I'm sure, sort of like a shares. But that was done. Fairfield was in Winnipeg, and they they did a big business, and that didn't stop until the war. That that was during the um, that the war days. That was during the depression. We got every bit of. I have nothing left of my baby clothes and that sort of thing because they all went for the wool. Mm. And then they came to our back to us in blankets. Mm -hmm. And um, occasionally somebody would get a part of the fleece from somebody. Do you know out. anybody that wants fleeces? No, I don't. I've got a, I've got two, two or three carded fleeces upstairs in my. Uh, yeah. But um, a friend of mine was uh, selling his wool to uh, the Indians, but the Indians have quit making those sweaters. The, uh, the colleges. The colleges have they, have they quit? Yeah. This one band, anyway, along the Fraser River, well, I was making them. And he was selling his wool to them, and he said they quit. He says, I've got uh, 50 sheep or something like that. And uh, I know he's got these fleeces laying up in the... Well, I've got a write-out. You know, we've been wondering for years why, why 
there wasn't the sale for the wool, but the, but the type of sheep that, that Canadians have liked best to eat are not wool, good wool producers. They only produce <coughs> just certain parts of the, uh, of the um, fleece is worthwhile. worthwhile. And uh, most of it is very second grade wool, and that was because the staple is so short. Yeah. Yeah. You need that long, you need a long curly one. staple to hold yeah. the thing together. Yeah. As, as a woman came in here to me the other day, I you know something about carding. I don't know what, but they, they're raising Angora goats over the yeah. five mile. Yeah. What and was her name? I can't remember. And um, she was telling me quite a bit about it. She said there is a sale for Angora, but it's got to be of a certain quality. And she said, we're breeding for that. No. To and she came to Mrs. Um, oh, what's her name? She was down near, down near uh, Jerry Lowen, across the highway there. And they drove down there. And she does, she does her own dyeing and she, and cards and spins and looking at it. She's a younger woman. No. She's, oh. Oh, she must. She's over forty, I'm sure. She might be fifty. Well, the other one was the raising the Angora. They're young people. Yeah. Hannets. Does it start with H? I don't know. Yeah. But this this one that I speak of down here, she'd come into her and she had sent her to me. Well I couldn't help her at all. I didn't know anything yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. You but know where a nice wool is that I saw? Everybody that knew I was going to Iceland said, Get some wool. And they they know how to to uh, and they raise sheep that will produce the kind of wool they, they need. Really fine. So does so does New Zealand and yeah. uh, Australia. Yeah. And, uh, but in this country, we haven't raised that kind of sheep. Yeah. Well, there's no reason why we couldn't. I mean, import some stock from those countries because the climate in Canada, uh, there's got to be a match for a climate almost anywhere in the world except subtropicals. Yes. In Canada. Well, I don't, I don't care for New Zealand lamb, but for some reason, it's uh, it's well, old. No, it's not that. I, I don't think it is. I think it's very good lamb. But the thing is that now I, there used to be an old German man here years ago, and he had a little meat market, and he sold rabbits. Mm. Well, he had other meat too, but there. But Don't mention that to Carl. Cure, <laughs> cured. <laughs> he had cured meats and such like old yeah. German yeah. recipes and that sort of thing. Sausages. And a nice old guy he was. And I was in one day, and he went and tried to interest me in rabbit, and I said, No, I, I couldn't eat rabbit. That's all there's to it. He says, It's the wrong. Maybe it's the kind. He says, you know, what most people don't know, he said, there are some rabbits that are so mild flavored that you can't tell if they aren't chicken. This mm -hmm. kind of thing. And he says, there's also... The old males. A, uh, no, that wasn't it. It's, it was the breed. And he says, only an old German that likes Hassan paper or something other like that yeah. can eat them. He says, they're so yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah. And he says, there are so many Different varieties in between. In between. Well, I think that's the secret of the New Zealand and, our, and the, the land that, we, that they've been raising here, mm -hmm. it is just a different breed, and I don't think the flavor is well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this friend of mine down there, his name it's is Greer. beautiful meat. Yeah, this guy, oh gee, he had a sad run. He said, well, you're gonna have some lamb tonight. We got back from Norway. He said, you're gonna have some lamb tonight. What's that? Good, he raises them down there, you know, in the Fraser Valley. Was that ever good? Yeah. But and I don't particularly like New Zealand lamb. You know, oh, I, no. I go along with you. It's the it's it's the breed. It's not yeah. the and and uh, but anyway. So this one was uh, trying to get Cardi to figure out how to card Angora. And, and uh, yes, that was some of it. And uh, but she she told me quite a little bit about ra raising the Angoras and the, the standard that they had to meet to be able to sell to the. Um, People that you know, really really into it, to be really yeah. be able to sell to them, and if they do, if they do, they've got a steady market, mm -hmm. and they maybe not even be able to fill it, but it's got to meet a certain standard. Yeah. yeah. And, but I well, don't. Well, people are getting more, more and more now. They want quality. I mean, for a yes. long time, people didn't. Well, there's just young yeah. kids particularly didn't want quality. They didn't care whether if it was a table, it was a table, you know. Yeah. And so much of the furniture. That's what I was interested in. Always. So much of that junk that came out in the 60s was oh, and, it was really and 70s it, was it got really to be, junk. It got to be more and more and more. What can you get? Uh, what you can get away with? Yeah. But now, since they've been bringing back 
build yeah. skills and, right. and yeah. things, they begin to find out that there's there's so much variety and and so many things to to individual skills and see that England was like that for such a long time, but then they got to the they got this last few years of the put out amount of things and not putting the, the hand skills into them and people didn't like it. And they no, there it's it's just some more stuff. It, it, it won't it won't survive as a as a as a hand as Adams furniture and Hepel White and and all of the things yeah. that were in the in the states and in England and various places yeah. of Canada. Eastern Canada have named yeah. have named things made of, of the various kinds of woods and such like in the joints the wood to wood joints rather oh, yeah. than did you know that up on the um, Bay Farm up on the Bay Ranch above the um, yeah, did you ever have they pulled down that big old barn? There was a barn there for years and years. It was made by some early settlers here. And there's not a nail. There wasn't a nail in it. All wooden pegs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dolls. Uh, and um, and um, mortise joints. Mortise joints. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was old. I knew a family that was really very hard up during the war, the, uh, the depression, and the war. that lived in that barn. Uh -huh. And um, one of them's now a doctor. And one of them is, but they. They can remember, well, the youngest one can, but the, the older one can remember living in that barn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been in it. You know what they're tearing down now, don't you? I haven't told you. I told Zelma. Maybe she told me. They're tearing down an old building over on Angela Avenue. And did we find the old colored bottles? Oh, <laughs> 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 did. Because that was, a, that was a very flourishing <laughs> history. Industry, in yeah. State. Yeah. But it's really interesting. I saw too in there the, the, the wood that they used. I don't think that uh, that building was built by a first class carpenter, but the wood in there was really nice. Oh, okay. what you we had know. two or three so called carpenters here. One of the best we had. We didn't have any finishers or anything. Mm -hmm. And they were <laughs> very wild. <laughs> yeah. They, got, they had work all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, but. Uh, one the the really idea. good ones, if you wanted a good carpenter, uh, they came. Well, a, a good English carpenter was hard to be. A good old craftsman from England. Correct. Scandinavia produced some pretty good carpenters. Yeah. And Germany. This house they, this house was a two-room, well, it, it was a little, um, little house, made, done by two old Swedish sea captains. Yeah. Norwegian sea captains. They built it. They built it. And we just built a large and, uh, and yeah. added on. And, and Which was this the first? Was this the room? And the room to that, the, to that uh, beam there, and there was a lean-to bedroom on it. Oh, yeah. And the lean-to, there was that little part there, but there was no, uh, there were no doors there. We put the doors in, and the kitchen door was there. And it was, it was a lean-to. My husband couldn't, I could just barely stand up in that kitchen. Oh, and he was tall. And he was tall. He was yeah. not very tall, but he was average tall, you know. And uh, he had, then the kitchen, the sink was in the corner, so he had to, and there's no bathroom, of course, and he had to get into that corner to wash, and if he didn't watch what he was doing, he'd bang Play. his head on the ceiling. I'll bet you heard lots of thuds through the years. Huh? Oh, yes. Well, we didn't have it very long, yeah. because our family came along a pace, and uh, we took the lid off the, the outside walls, and the lean tos and ran them up and put a new lid on it. Yeah, two and story. Later, yeah. And then later put in the stairway. Yeah. But there wasn't a stairway on, in there for a long, no, for several years after we put the top up. I think absolutely. But and absolutely no insulation. You couldn't get near a window in the winter time without your hat and coat on. That's when those quilts came in handy, huh? Well, they had to have them, yes. Yeah. And there were lots of fires in those days. You mean house fires? House fires, yes. Well, Over here. so that was, so the church maintained a stockpile of quilts just for fires? or what? No, I don't work? think, no, they didn't. Uh, it, there wasn't a stockpile. And then we did it for quite a number of years. But there were fewer and fewer fires. Yeah. Until there was one fire here, and a friend I had, so don't give, uh, uh, don't give such and such a family. They were burned up in one of the tubs, log cabins down there. Mm -hmm. Don't give them a quilt. And, uh, so she 
said to me, she said, you know, they've been boasting. And she and her husband both went frequented beer parlors, so she said, they've been boasting that uh, when they get their quilt from that bunch of grandmothers, that they're going to sell it, and then they'll be able to buy a whole lot more booze. Yeah. Yeah. So it came to a stop just about then. We have given a few, and you know, families have been burnt out. Did you ever hear back from people that got your quilts? Some, they, yes. Like, uh, I was asking Zelma this one time, and she didn't hear them. Overseas or anywhere up north? Well, none of ours went overseas. I thought the baby stuff goes over there now. Oh, that. Oh, yes. Well, we always hear quite a bit from them. Yeah. But we don't hear from the individuals. Presumably, oh. they can't read and write to start yeah. with. Yeah. But, um... I wonder if anything ever interesting turned up. Like, uh, you know, any messages that came back. No, not particularly. They, and and our, our, um, our bundles for the, for the mothers are prescribed. They're, they're just a certain thing going. They don't want anything else in them. We've sent other things, but they go aside. But these things, and they're given to the mother when, after the baby's born. Oh, yeah. And presumably they will, they will carry them for the first maybe two years. Mm -hmm. There's one garment that will, will is a two-year size. The rest are all for younger babies. Mm -hmm. And, and um, presumably the youngster hasn't had another garment on at all that wears this little knitted affair that we make. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, I'll bet their eyes just gleam when they see those. Well, and they said to make as many colors as we could, make them odds and ends and bits and pieces. It didn't make any how many things, so long as they were warm, well knitted, and uh, they're all done with the same pattern, basic pattern. I mean, you can do any mm -hmm. kind of fancy stitches that you wanted, or not stitches, but I mean colors. Uh, so that uh, there was no favoritism or anything that we could, and, and the, the mother's bundle is tied up in the little blanket. And a lot of those mothers would tie that blanket over their back. To carry the baby in. Carry the baby in later. Yeah. So it mustn't be under a certain size. So those are those are, are just basics. Where What countries do they go to? Africa? Well, they've gone to uh, Korea. Yeah. A lot to Korea. And they've gone to Bangladesh and they've gone to various things. They've gone to some, some to Africa.